Hey, welcome back. It is now February 16th of 2020, and ever since the release of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, a lot of fans have been wondering about Kathleen Kennedy's leadership and whether or not she really is best suited for Star Wars into this decade. This is Mike Zero. Make sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel for future Star Wars content. Now, in case you guys did not know, Kathleen Kennedy's creative control was taken away from her for all of the Star Wars projects that are in the early development phase as we speak, not just for Disney Plus and the Star Wars TV series to come on that and that streaming service, but also for the theatrical releases, such as the new Star Wars trilogy to be released in the near future. Now, with that being said, we do know that The Rise of Skywalker was a very tough production for Disney, Lucasfilm, and everybody else on board, such as the actors, the actresses, the cast, the crew in general, right? We do know that this movie was a very difficult process from start to finish because not only did they have two phases of reshoots and rewrites, but they also had creative differences between Kathleen Kennedy and Colin Trevorrow for the first script of the film and of course when the script was being picked up by Jack Thorne when he stepped in. So there was a lot of changes to episode 9, not just from Colin but also for J.J. Abrams and Chris and George Lucas, etc. And the fact that Kathleen Kennedy, like I say, you know, is the president of Lucasfilm, she needs to be swapped out with somebody else that really knows Star Wars at its core. Now, with that being said, what's really intriguing about all of this is that now that both Disney and Lucasfilm are finished with The Rise of Skywalker, they are moving on to their new Star Wars universe and their new trilogy as well in order to reunite the fans around the world. Now, it's noted that one of the big plans by Disney and Lucasfilm is to create a new universe that will evolve the Star Wars franchise for the fans. Where, however, during many of the interviews during and after the premiere of The Rise of Skywalker, sometime after the film released, many interviews were given to Kathleen Kennedy about the film, where at one point she was asked about the big revelation at the very end of the movie of Rey calling herself a Skywalker, where Kathleen Kennedy stated that at this point in time in the Skywalker saga, is that Rey is the strongest Skywalker there is out of the entire saga that George created. More powerful than both Luke Skywalker and Anakin Skywalker and that she is very proud to see such a character portrayed by Daisy on film that made this possible to end the saga that started back in 1977. Also, when questioned about Palpatine, Kennedy states that, it, that this was a very tough decision to bring him back the way that he was brought back but that they knew that they needed to bring back Ian McDermott for the role of the film. Kennedy even states that at one point in time they were questioning on if they should even recast Ian for the older version of Sidious, however they decided to stick with the story where Kennedy says that the title of the film was the best choice and that the ending of the film couldn't have been done in any other way and that this was the absolute best way to end the Skywalker saga by George Lucas. And that she is very proud with making Rey a Skywalker and her being stronger than both Anakin and Luke is a great message for hope. So let's go over a couple of parts about this. Now, to me, I don't know if you guys will agree or disagree with me on this. Everyone has their own opinions and that's all welcome here in the comments. But to me, Rey is just not a Skywalker. She's not a real Skywalker. So for Kathleen Kennedy to say that she is by far the most powerful Skywalker, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because she's not really connected to both Anakin or Luke Skywalker. And sure, at the end of the day, we do know that Rey has dark side tendencies. She has dark side ties. She is a Palpatine, after all, who calls herself a Skywalker. So, in a way, you know, you can see how they were trying to justify as to why she would even be stronger than both Anakin or Luke. And it seems like that that's their way of justifying that. But Kathleen Kennedy, like I say, the fact that, you know, she was the one who came up with the idea of calling Rey a Skywalker and titling the movie all because of Rey, I think it just shows that she was trying to get fans into the theater seats to go ahead and see this movie based on the title and the title alone. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, nobody else is stronger than Luke and Anakin in the Skywalker bloodline. In fact, I would even go as far to say that Ben Solo can't even top Luke or Anakin. That's just how I see things. That's just my opinion. I don't know if you guys disagree with that, but that's fine. 
but like I've said before in the past, when you look at Disney and Lucasfilm here, there's a lot of creative decisions that they went through, not just with the old scripts of the movie, but also with the script by J.J. Abrams, Chris Terrio, and George. A lot of adjustments were made. In fact, initially, Rey was never going to be a Palpatine or a Skywalker. They wanted her to become a Kenobi. And that's exactly one of the main reasons as to why J.J. Abrams had Kenobi reach out to Rey in The Force Awakens. Now, they want to do something a little bit more dramatic, a little bit more eye-popping to the point where you could make a hero tied to the bloodline of a villain. And that's exactly what they wanted to do in order to twist things around a little bit. And to me, I think it could have it could have really been a better and a bigger surprise the way that it was presented, other than Kylo Ren just saying, you or a Palpatine, it was a little low key to me. So anyways guys, drop a comment below, let me know what you think about all this in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, do make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. I thank you all so very much for the kind support, and I'll catch you guys next time.